We're doing A Doll's House by, by Henrik Ibsen. It is the most produced play in the world. Really? Yes, and Ibsen is the second most produced playwright after William Shakespeare. Wow. And the issues of A Doll's House, over a hundred years afterwards, have not left us. Right. I think it's the way a couple can fall into patterns of playing social games. This is a play about a marriage of, of Nora and Torvald, and, and Nora grew up in her father's house and was, was told to do everything by her father and ends up marrying her husband who does the same thing. The husband becomes tremendously sick. And, and he is, she is told by the doctor that unless they go to Italy for a year, he will not recover. But they don't have any money. And her father is dying. She forges her father's signature on something and borrows 4,000 krona or 4,800 krona from, from a lawyer so that her husband will live. And then he comes, she never tells him, she comes back, he lives, and what she's doing every night is, is doing copying to earn money to pay back their loan. Mm -hmm. um, and so she sacrificed everything for this man. Mm -hmm. Of course, any kind of a cover-up, the cover-up keeps mm -hmm. getting worse and worse and worse. And everyone, because, because she has taken on this role of the doll, Everyone thinks that she's dumb, that she's stupid. I think your people in life always end up playing roles. But you end up playing roles and then you find out that you're stuck in that role. If you're stuck in roles that you know, this is the role I play, this is the role you play, and you'd ask me to get out of that, oh my God, I don't have a script, I don't know what to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's amazing that Ibsen wrote it out of a contemporary account of a woman who left her husband and was declared insane mm -hmm. and put in a hospital. Because the other thing is, when it was originally done, it, couldn't be, it wasn't done in, 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 uh, in Scandinavia, it was done in Germany. And the German actress was like, I would never leave my children, I can't do this. So Ibsen's response was, fine, if someone's going to write a happy ending, I'll write it. Mm -hmm. He changed five lines at the end of the play. It's so false that after a couple of performances the actress went, we have to play the original ending. <laughs> you know, because because it, it, it was just, you know, it was one of these things where Torvald takes Nora to the door and, oh, there are the poor children, how can you leave the children? And, oh, I can't leave right. the children, I'm going to stay. You know, and, it, and, it, and I really do think it is, is, is a play about how people can get trapped in roles. And Ibsen's other point, which I think is still true to this day, Lord knows it's true in the U.S., that laws are made for men, right. not women. Right. And Lord knows now we're getting a whole bunch of men who know everything about how to control and everything they should know about a woman's body. So is that one of the things that drew you to direct the play? Well, and the fact that uh, it is amazingly written. Mm -hmm. There is no fat. It's amazing. I mean, it is like this incredible machine. You know, Ibsen thought about his place for a long time and cranked out a play every two years. And I think by the time he sat down to write an awful lot of his plays, he had spent so much time in his head that it just sort of came out. But it's just, it is, it is an amazing play, which is why I think it is the most produced play in the world. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we haven't progressed, <laughs> which is the sad, sad part. Right. This is another play with children, and I, I do think it is important for the audience to see them so they know what Nora's sacrifice really is when she leaves. That it isn't, it, it isn't just a personal sacrifice if you don't know me, I need to find out who I am. Uh, you know, that she's leaving her children. She's, she's, she's taking this tremendous leap mm -hmm. of faith that she will be able to find out who she is. I think, you know, some people always think that you're going to that you should sacrifice everything for you, for other people, or your children, or whatever. Um, and, and so I think that is always shocking. And I also think it's shocking because I think women are put into this role of, you know, you're the wife, you're the mother, you're the wife, you're the mother. Sometimes you need to make decisions like this in your life. 
and they don't come easily or cheap. Why should people be excited about this show? Because it is one of the most produced plays in the world, and it hasn't been produced in Austin, I think, in 20 years. What? No, it hasn't. Wow. No, it hasn't been produced here in a long time. I find the more I read it, I'm, I'm terribly excited. And what I've, been, what I've been reading a lot, which I find fascinating, is the opening scene and the closing scene. And I love the fact of how similar they are and how radically different they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and how the, Ibsen is just, it, the setup is just so, I, again, as I said, there's no fat. Right. Absolutely no fat in this play whatsoever. I hope we've taken the audience on a journey that they're worn out emotionally and physically. But, you know, once you say things like you're an unfit wife and mother, you can't, you know, sometimes in relationships when you say that, that kind of stuff, it, you can't but get it back in the box. <laughs> right. It won't go back in the box. Everyone's heard it.